Okay, so two handouts today that are summaries of previous lectures. Um, I, go, I got to start by correcting a typo in the first, in the first one. Um, I'm going to get this name right before the end of the of the class. Can we have this on this on the uh, yeah uh, her her la Mary Claire? I find we got her the first name spelled right, but now her last name has a lowercase v instead of an uppercase v. Um, so um, now her, I guess her book still hasn't come into the bookstore, but it's but uh, since it's from. Random House, it ought to be coming in soon. Uh, but I think uh, there's a rumor that both Stacy's and Printer's Inc. do have copies. And so so uh, if you, instead of going to the Stanford bookstore, there's other bookstores around that would probably have it. Uh, but you, but uh, uh, a little bit more waiting should, should do also. For, um, now, Mary Claire ha is, uh, uh, has told me a wonderful thing. She will help read your uh, term papers and the drafts of your term papers uh, for, for f to give you feedback. So, uh, so we're going to have a real expert um, um, pitching in on the, uh, on the grading for this course. Okay, now, let's see, anything else? Old business? I, I wanted to talk today about some experiences on what I call literate programming and show you uh, some of the ways in which people um, are, are groping with uh, finding a style when, you, when you're using a new form of expression. And I think this is kind of interesting to see the evolution that goes on. I know it, it certainly happened in my own case. I, I spent about, um, as I was designing the web system, I spent, uh, uh, well, let's see, the first test case was to write web in its own language. And um, uh, I, so I started out and I, and I wrote about 25 pages of code um, in what I thought web would look like. Then I uh, tore it all up and started over again. But by that time, I had developed a style that seemed to be working. And, then I, and, and of course, then I have to implement the program that's translating the, the text I'm writing. So there's a, there's a uh, vicious circle there. You have to have the program before you can do it. And then after I had the program written, by the way, I had to, had to bootstrap it. Uh, I had to first, I had to first um, uh, simulate by hand the computer program that would, that would m take my web program uh, into Pascal by, by making a Pascal program by hand from my web specifications. And, and uh, then I uh, had to debug that, and so, and, but I, I didn't have to have the whole Pascal program. I could leave out the parts that were generating error messages or something that I wasn't going to be using uh, on my first, on my, you know, when web runs correctly, it doesn't generate errors. Uh, and so I could, you know, I only had to implement a subset. But, I, but you start out, and, and, and in order, it's a little bit interesting computer scientists to figure out how, how you get web going on a new system. If you have, if you have a Pascal compiler, uh, and a tech processor, you should be able to, but let's suppose you only have a Pascal compiler and you want to, and, and somebody sends you uh, some web, uh, web files. So including, this means you have a copy of Weave Web and Tangle Web, the two, the two processors, the Weave processor and the Tangle processor, written in web. Um, but all you, all you have is Pascal. So you also get a copy of Tangle.Pascal, the output of, of, of um, Tangle on itself. And once you've got that, then you're in business because you can then use that to tangle tangle and with, with a few changes for your own system and you can use that process that to tangle weave and, and then you can get going. But as the bootstrapping process is, uh, is like all bootstrapping processes. You start out with a, a, a forced, uh, uh, you know, limited amount of capabilities that build that, that gradually build on on themselves. It's like when you when you boot a machine, <clears throat> when, when you uh, when you when a machine makes a cold start, it, it, the hardware has um, knows how to do almost nothing at first, and then it gets more and more of its stuff in, and so on. Same same way with that. Well, that's that's uh, that's a minor minor point. Um, now, so I was bootstrapping. However, uh, I. In another sense, where I was actually trying to des design a system for, for literate programming, and uh, and so my so I had to evolve a style of how I was going to write the program and so on and that, and then uh, uh, after I had uh, then after I had the uh, web system, 
then I could uh, start writing tech. Um, the whole process of uh, writing the web system, though, was about two months. Um, two months of programming. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't a great slowdown. And then, then uh, se several years to, to get tech all, all uh, uh, refined because of, a, uh, because tech was supposed to be a, a permanent product. While web is just a uh, was just an experiment. And and there's many things in web, that are, that show the fact that it was only done in two months. <laughs> and it's never intended to be a permanent thing um, just as a, just a demonstration of what could be done. But I think that now the experiment has been so successful that it's been demonstrated that uh, that uh, programming the programming environments based on some kind of a uh, system like this are, uh, are called for and that's what the current research is doing. Well what I want to show you is is how um, the undergrads that I worked with last spring um, adapted to this Style of programming, and uh, the, you know the, some of the some of the painful changes that must go on when you when you have one way of writing programs, and then someone tells you now I want you to write a different way, and uh, some of them did it uh, rather reluctantly. Some of them did it very uh, took to it real fast, um, <clears throat> and uh, it's it's hard for me as the author of the system to look at it, of course, in a in a dispassionate way. Um, uh, and uh, I, I get uh, I get uh, various kind of feedback. Some of it's very it's very pleasing because it's. I mean, I've heard of some people said at Hewlett Packard in their division they started using this way of coding, and the guy said uh, he would never leave Hewlett Packard unless unless it was for another company that was using web. I mean, he he thought it was the right way to program too. So, well, now let me sh show you first though an example of one of the students who uh, who. Uh, uh, probably didn't like it very much. Um, uh, so, <clears throat> so now, now this each of these programs I'm showing you is, is for a slightly different uh, problem. Problem, and uh, the idea is that the students are writing programs that are going to be that I'm going to eventually rewrite as part of a larger project. But I wanted to get uh, I wanted to get their their input and, and ideas on the. On how, how to how to do it? <clears throat> okay, this particular program is is based on five-letter words of English. Um, can you zoom up on it a bit more? Um, I, I, I want to go actually to, to the top here, but I would like to get this in in pretty you know this this up here. Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty close up on this guy. Then I can then I can uh, I can pan it for there. Now, five-letter words uh, is one of the things in this we're working with in this particular project. We were taking all the, I have a database where I think I have all of the five-letter words of English, and um, and I wanted to check that I that I really that that I really did have them. So I was going to have this, this guy go through all the uh, computer files that we have uh, of text, especially text that I've written. Uh, and look for the five-letter words that appear in there and see how many of those five-letter words were not in my database. Um, so anyway, that's the idea of the program. And he starts out, and first of all, at the beginning, uh, the first paragraph just suffers from ordinary ideas about English writing. Uh, uh, this program reads a list of five-letter words and puts them into a dictionary. It then scans an input file of text and finds the five-letter words. Um, I change it to then it scans an input file of text and finds the five hyphen letter words. Because, you know, he hyphenated five letter words in the, pre in the previous sentence, he should hyphenate five letter words and all that. Um, so standard uh, ideas of English go in here. And then there's a problem about the it not being, uh, it checks to see if the word is in the dictionary or if it has already uh, been found by the program. And so, um, you know, that it wasn't too clear. So if the word is in the dictionary or if the word has already been found by the program. Um, <clears throat> then it says, if it isn't in either list, so I said, a word that isn't in either list is added to the list of words fund, found, <clears throat> and all this. Now, um, um, OK, so the, at the beginning, uh, introductory paragraph, uh, just ordinary writing there. Um, now. Uh, then we got to the uh, uh, begin to to actually start using web and all this, and so he um, uh, uh, has something where he's called size of word with caps. I I took I said here uh, 
um, I made that symbol, which means go to lowercase. But um, I, I now see I, I misunderstood him. He's talking about uh, probably a string called word, which is defined down here. And so uh, what what I should have told him to do here was really uh, uh, put put uh, uh, vertical lines in his file, which would which would mean that then typographically this would mean the the variable, the program variable word, which would then go into a, into italics. Um, <clears throat> and uh, but uh, now, the the uh, uh, as I told you the uh, the other day, the idea of of web is that you that uh, you the you uh, um, stick in one module for another. Like here, you see this types goes in, and variables and the main program gets stuck in. Uh, and then you describe those separately in the part in a, in a part where it's convenient for exposition. Um, now, um, but this, but uh, w w you know, the person was was still using, was still writing a Pascal program and still thinking of it as a Pascal program and not getting the idea of how to present a program in this in this uh, form. And so, um, really, there's very little difference in this exposition. Be, 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 other than an ordinary one. So he starts out and he finds types, and then he says, these are the global variables. Um, now let me explain uh, the, the, about the uh, advantage of not doing it this way, um, which, of course, uh, then he understood in, on his next draft. Um, um, the, uh, let me, I guess the best way to show you is to show you the exa example of uh, uh, this, this. This is uh, the largest program that I that I've done with this style, and it's uh, and it's uh, how many parts all together? Let's see, what is it? 14, 1,300 and 1,360, uh, uh, parts to it, and um, and I believe that uh, there are now. Oh, hundreds of people in the world who have gone through this rather, rather thoroughly and understand this program quite, quite well, and um, uh, pro and uh, the uh, it's a long program, but still uh, it's possible to present even this this and and uh, even the sh for short programs the same kind of thing happens. But in this case, there's something I call global variables. But um, if you go to module 13, it's not going to be a list of all the global variables in the program. Um, instead, uh, you can keep introducing global variables anywhere you feel like another global variable. And so um, uh, let's look at section 20, for example. Section 20 is where I get some, some, some global variables. Now, this is a feature of web I didn't talk about on Monday, and that is that you can have many different sections with the same name. So section 20 has got this name. The, 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 the Pascal code in section 20 is global variables. The Pascal code in section 13 was global variables. And the first, and they, they all get collected into the program in, this, in, in one place, but you, you keep on adding to this part of the program every time you, you have another global variable you want, you, would, you, you introduce a new, a new global variable. And so when the, when the, uh, when the person reading your, your program is is psychologically ready to know that that another variable is going to be put in there, then you tell them, okay, by the way, here's, an, here's a global variable that we're going to put in, and uh, that's one of the features of the web tangle system, that this will get concatenated, it will be added on to all the other things that were were mentioned uh, as called called global variables. So, so uh, uh, you can, in other words, there's a question of motivation there, and the whole idea is to try to present a program in a form that um, that a reader is ready to pick up the idea of the of that part of the program. Um, this is quite different from the form that you present to a to a to a Pascal compiler. The Pascal you, first you tell the Pascal compiler you list all your global variables, but the Pascal compiler you don't have to motivate the Pascal compiler. It, it'll do this. You know, it'll it, it's just not not getting. Uh, you know. In fact, it. <laughs> The psychology of computer programs is a little bit interesting because uh, everybody thinks that when they get to the to the parts of their program that were hardest to write, the machine slows down a little bit when it gets there because it's hard to understand what it's doing, you know. But no, but uh, uh, in fact, when you when you look at the running time statistics, um, most of the time the machines are doing things that that you didn't spend much time 
writing, like, uh, and it's just, uh, but you have a bad, a, a false, we have a false conception of where our, where our computer programs are, are spending their, are, uh, are, uh, are working, and we, we think almost always that, um, uh, that the com that the computer is most is 90% of the time working on the part that was hardest for us to write, but really 90% of the time it's p passing over blank spaces in a comment or something like this that was tri that was trivial we never even thought about. Um, well, uh, anyway, the psychology of it um, for for a, 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 a reader is is what we're trying to do when we present the program, and it turns out that this is almost always about the same way in which you, as when you wrote the program, had to make the decisions. W about the time when you were writing the program and decided to have a global variable named something is about the time that somebody reading the program is going to want to know uh, that there should be this, 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 this global variable or whatever decision, other decision you're making about a data structure or so, so on. So the, this uh, stream of consciousness order of presentation of, uh, how, of how to present the the program to a reader that the reader can understand what the program does is ver is rather close, I believe, to the order in which you actually made those decisions yourself as you were writing the program. And um, I find that uh, as I was writing this long, you know, 1,400 module program, um, it was always fairly clear to me that I had to do an, one of the next, uh, the, that I had to go in a certain order, that, that a certain module had to be the next one to do. I didn't have very much choice in my own mind as to what to do next, even though it goes on and on for 500 and some pages. Um, I, I knew that I wanted to do first the, uh, uh, the uh, printing routine and then an error the routine that would print out error messages and then a routines for data structures. It, somehow that, that order was forced on me. It was just the natural the natural question to, to ask myself, how am I going to do this as I write the program? And, sim and a reader who wants to read and understand the program, it's also the, the thing that the reader should next, wants to know next. Uh, very, very close, I, th I think, in most cases. Um, so, uh, but here's, a, here's an example where web isn't being used. It's just, it's just being used as a formatter for, for, for making uh, somewhat better comments. But, but the order of presentation hasn't been hasn't been lot, uh, hasn't been caught here, um, and uh, and uh, f you see also here's uh, two right braces on separate lines here, uh, indicating that uh, um, he he is used to putting comments on two lines and uh, forgets that a formatter might be able to get that all on one line or, or choose the best line break. Um, okay, now let's see. Um, so I'm starting out with showing you the, uh, the learner's experiences with this. And a uh, uh, minor problem here is uh, put a hyphen at the end of a line in the word processor. I thought that the, you know always puts a space after that, too. Um, but uh, let's see. What I wanted to mention, I guess, is um, uh, problem of exposition as in general for for how do you describe a computer a, a computer uh, the behavior of a computer program uh, are, are, we, are we running the is is the is the program off there running itself uh, some automaton doing the thing or are are we part of the action uh, are we are we participating in the program somehow uh, that's livelier to do the, to put us into in the picture um, and uh, so probably we get there's a so probably so here you see see if we have already found this word in this in this file and it says if we have not it puts the word into the list okay now you know there, he, it was a dilemma in his mind which way it was going to be but I think you go with we on this uh, when you're when you're part of the program uh, I think we're participating. So it's not only a dialogue um, uh, author and reader as a team here, but really we're also collaborating with the, we're, we're also uh, uh, carrying out the uh, algorithm as we're, as we're doing it, I think. And so, um, so let's see if we have already found this word in the file. So I rewrote it saying, if not, we put the word into the list of new words found. Okay, and then we say, we keep finding five-letter words and checking them until the end of the file in, is reached, okay, so. Now, um, another thing, uh, 
in this style of programming, uh, one of the main ideas of, it, uh, I guess the main idea was to understand a complicated thing locally by understanding uh, each part uh, and then how those parts relate to each other one. And one of the keys then is to put a name into each part. So here we have a name of the main program and then that invokes other parts, one called uh, puts the word into the dictionary and here was one called store the new word in the list of new words. Now, you know, we should try to think of a style that's consistent here puts the word into the dictionary is a, uh, is a, uh, I, what's the proper technical word for this? Uh, so it's a, you know, it's a, it's a description or something that puts the word in the dictionary. But here we have a definite imperative store. You know, it's, it starts out with a, with a verb uh, saying do it. And I, I, I think that that tends to work out best, uh, say put the words into the dictionary. So, so I would start out with an imperative and uh, it seemed to be best for me to capitalize it in that case, uh, like the main program. Now, the main program was not a, an imperative. It was, a de a, it was, it was, a, it was declarative. Um, and uh, there's different parts of the, of the code that are imperative and, and declarative. For example, global variables, that's declarative. You're declaring a global variables. Um, but when you, so, so if you want to be imperative, you'd say do the main program. But the main program is really a piece of text. It's, an, it's, a, dec, it's a declarative thing. Something is there. But when you start out with an imperative verb, you're saying this is a bunch of commands that are, that are being executed. So I think it's a good, a good idea to, to, to have that uh, uh, convention that you start out with an with a imperative verb when, you, when uh, the module in question is, is commands. Start out and but start out with something you know the main program something just plain old declarative, just give a noun. Uh, when it's uh, uh, when really the the module consists of a uh, piece of text that sort of has the has a declarative function, although the main program then in the text actually is actions. Um, <clears throat> the uh, uh, there's a way to, to have, what, what about long identifiers? Now, he's got things called out file, in file, get word, find in dic, find in new words. Um, and uh, a lot of times people will use a convention in their, uh, in their text files now when you have a long compound identifier made up of several words to uh, capitalize each word afterwards so that you get in, so that uh, you can see where they, where they break up. Well, he, this one, of course, was a little inconsistent there. This finding was, would have put an I in there. Um, personally, I find that that, that that looks bad typographically. When, uh, these, these fonts of type that have evolved over many years were never intended for an uppercase letter to be following a lowercase letter, and it doesn't, and they, they don't usually look very good in that. In that way, it's not too, not too bad on a typewriter and a, and a terminal. When, um, but uh, um, uh, so anyway, I, uh, the web system has a has a way to uh, to make compound words that looks better typographically, I believe, and we'll see a lot more examples of it where you would actually would actually say get word with a little line in between tying the tying the two together. Now Pascal doesn't allow this little line as part of a the name of an identifier, but Tangle takes it out, and uh, but it's still, you, you can put it there in your input file, and uh, it tends to make the program look better. I think a lot better uh, when you have a when you have a compound name, and and I think you do need compound names. Uh, it's impossible to, uh, to to find one word always that will describe everything in a long in a long program. Um, and along, in fact, some people, uh, I think it was, this was an innovation of the Digitech, the people, um, uh, it's called Digitech Corporation, who, who made a lot of waves in the early 60s by having the best compilers on the market. And their style of programming was to have identifiers that were about 40 characters long. And each, but each one was sort of a, a short story telling you exactly what they, all the invariants and everything were encoded in that identifier. And, and whenever you, and uh, I don't know how they got the typist to type all these things over and over again, but, uh, but it was very clear reading the code of what, it, what, what the meaning of every variable was. Uh, that was a, 
on extreme, but uh, and then they didn't write any comments in their code at all. <laughs> uh, um, okay, so that's uh, that's this. Now let's see. Um, so I would I would give I would have called this word underline list uh, as a better choice of name. I think. Um, okay, now. But uh, uh, evidently, the capitalization means nothing to this person because here's a ch and a ch, both caps, and they must they must mean the same, the same one. Now, the comment that I gave him at this one is this mo module is completely unmotivated at this place. Also, it's misnamed as it merely skips over blanks. So the so the the uh, all of a sudden in the middle of this after presenting. Um, after presenting two things here, which was fairly good. I mean, storing a new word, storing an old word. This was f fairly reasonable parallelism, um, uh, except there was no period there. But anyway, it was parallelism. Uh, but then all of a sudden, we have another, a new uh, a, a something which is called, skip to the beginning of the next word. And, and if you look at the code, it says, it just looks, it skips over blanks. Now, we're looking, we're reading an arbitrary text file. and. Um, the words in this text file are going to be, uh, this is going to be a technical concept. Word means something that is preceded by a non-letter and followed by a non-letter or something like that. I mean, a, a word doesn't have to, you know, there's, besides spaces, there's punctuation marks, parentheses, and all kinds of things in a file that aren't part of a word. And so um, when you say, if you would say skip to the beginning of the next word, you're talking about a technical thing, a word. Uh, a five-letter word that you're looking for in the file, and uh, this would uh, that would then you would then skip over more than just blanks. But this is something that just skips over blanks, and it also uh, uh, has another problem with with Pascal uh, that it assumes things that a lot, that some Pascal compilers will will do differently than others for writing um, portable code. But that's another subject. Um, so there's no point in putting this module here uh, until we're ready for it. So, uh, okay. Well, now let's see. Um, uh, this was a uh, uh, this was an example of engineer ease. The poor. The, I mean, this module read a word from the word file and stores it in the dictionary. It does absolutely no error checking and assumes each word is all lowercase. No punctuation there and everything. That was out, that was just uh, glitchy English. But um, but then it was okay. And the, the comment in the next part here was this module zips through the hash table, printing out all the words in each bucket. Uh, that made sense to in the context of the of the thing. <clears throat> well, um, now. Finally, we get to the part of the program where it says finding the next, fi next five-letter word, and this is where I was expecting I would find the, de the formal definition stated informally of what is a, a word when we talk about five-letter words in this program. The whole point of this program, there should be some part of the text which says what, what it is. But no, that was all left to, to, you had to read it from the code to smoke out what the idea is of a, of a, a quote, word, unquote. So, so um, the the main part of the documentation was w w was missing here, um, and uh, instead uh, the uh, the the uh, his his idea of what documentation should be is to give a play by play account, um, saying um, you know so here it is you see it's like. Uh, uh, it finds the fi next five-letter word. If it reaches the end before it finds a five-letter word, it returns the Boolean value false. It first checks if it's at the end of a line. If so, it does such and such. If not, it does this, reads it, converts. If, the, if it is a letter, it does this. If it is not, and so on. It's a, it exits this loop while it comes. So it's, this is a, a transcription of, of, a, of an algorithm into, uh, into words, but, it's, but it would be better to give the intuition. It would be better to give a high level rather than a play-by-play -play in this part, to set the scene for it. The play-by-play -play can be, anybody can understand the if and if, I mean, uh, by much easier reading code than by reading a whole bunch of ifs, thens, and, 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 and things like that. What you want here is the, the feeling for what's going on, I think. So, so um, um, 
uh, misconception. Now here's another thing about uh, this module is too long. You haven't discovered why web is good yet. <laughs> okay. So here we have a whole page of code. We, um, and uh, that's, that's it. Now the, the idea in, in web is to, to break a complex thing down into small parts. And, uh, and ideally about a maximum of a dozen lines of code in every part. Uh, so, um, uh, this, uh, this, th this whole bo box in here, for example, I would call a new module, I would call read from the file until coming to the end or to a word of the correct size, say, something like that. And then that would be, a, that would be you could read then this, this function get word and you would s be able to understand the function get word as a unit. Then if you want to find out exactly what it does when it's reading from the file, then we go into this other module, read from the file, and we, and we get to see it in, in, in place. Um, now, but here's, Here's a strange thing, and I still don't know what happened, but he, I say, oh my, you've really broken weave. Um, this is all formatted wrong. I, my, my, the, I have never seen my program do this before, and so somehow he, he, he must have inserted line breaks in his program or something that would, uh, that would, would, would cause the then to be on a separate line from the if, and and the begins aren't lining up right. Everything is broken, and I have no idea. I've never seen this happen before, and, I see, and the only way you can do that is by p putting little hidden commands inside, saying, uh, uh, do, do, do something unusual, and, and uh, so, anyway, so that's all broken there. Um, well, uh, that was one, so I was a bit discouraged when I saw that first one, but uh, things got better. <laughs> Now, another student here, um, was, uh, this brings up some more, uh, some more points about, about uh, uh, the use of a new, of a new system. Um, one of the, uh, one of the uh, <coughs> uh, special things is that there's, there's a, a, a module can be given a title that's going to carry over for several other modules, and then that becomes a subhead at the top, like the program or something. Used it here, but uh, but uh, the very first module, the uh, student didn't use it. Could have said introduction or something like that. So instead, we just got a, a, a sort of a default uh, subhead at the top. Uh, uh, so I just su just suggest write that. But now here's a, here's something more interesting. I think. Uh, um, he says, given a file name xxxxx.yyy, it will create a reverse file xxxxx.rev. Um, and these are all caps, maybe boldface, I don't know, but it doesn't look right in that font. Um, um, this is a variable with font and, co and, uh, and really it would have been, it would, if you had written it in a typewriter style, it would have come out looking like, some, like, the, like the name of a file to me. <laughs> okay, so. Now, uh, so this is a case where using the typewriter style of type, which which is is, is there, would would be a better, th uh, you know, better convention for referring to something that's a, a name of a file, which is something that that is a definite a typewritery um, thing. Um, now, again, this was the, this this is a freshman here who's writing his first short program in web. And uh, I'm expecting to find lots of things, of course, because I told him to just do, do something and let me criticize it. I didn't, t I didn't tell him to spend much time polishing or anything. I don't, don't get the wrong idea here. Um, the first, uh, the modules here, one was called variables, one was called type, and, and I, you know, I said make them both plural if you're going to do that. Um, now, <clears throat> um, Oh goodness! What were they going to say here? There's a bunch of things, but um, uh, I don't want to get into into unnecessary stuff. Here was a case again where where a long piece of code could be broken very nicely into two into two modules. So when I put this line around this business here, this me this said this would now become a mod a, another module called read the next line of input into data of counter and append a uh, percent sign and then that would be the then that module would do it it would read the next line into it and then there would be a corresponding one write data as a new line of output um, and and then I suggested there would be a parallel way to make an elegant code or something to look for anyway well um, so 
that was simply a case of taking a large piece of code then finding a small part that could be understood as a unit and and uh, and unifying it the 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 this person had a has a convention that when he writes uh, when he gets to the an end he says in a comment saying what kind of thing has ended end of a while end of a while end of a for statement end of a while and so on those comments are are no longer necessary when you have the web system, I think, after, uh, because the indentation makes it clear what's ending at the at this point. Um, so, the so there are places where you you know the, where you've used in, in your other in your other uh, 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 form of programming, you, the conventions were developed uh, which were appropriate to that style because they got around some of the problems of. Of, of that style of, of programming, but then those solutions are no, are, are, you know, they're just excess baggage when you bring over to an, a, another style often. Um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, here's, a, here's another kind of a, uh, something that I, I should mention sometime in this course, and that is when, you, when you're communicating with a user, this is another kind of uh, mathematical writing or technical writing. All your messages that go out to, on the terminal and back in, that's, that's, that's language and so on. Uh, think about style of, 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 uh, of, 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 of communicating. And uh, so here I, I, you know, this is name a file to reverse, please, and so on. And then that's a prompt and, and uh, it's reasonable. Um, and I was just saying, what about, what if you said, what file shall I reverse? Something like that, or should I reverse? Um, and that's another way to uh, to prompt a user uh, that I wanted to discuss a little bit uh, using first person. The computer is talking as if it's as if it's an animate object and says I, you know. And um, uh, some people think this is uh, very uh, uh, almost immoral to have to have computers personified. Uh, I think Dijkstra is very uh, against any kind of anthropomorphic uh, use uh, language uh, with respect to computers. Um, but I think it's it, it's very effective, and uh, and I always think of uh, it when I'm when I'm uh, talking about uh, protocols or something. It's mu much easier to think of a handshaking and this guy says something to that guy instead of uh, instead of saying this process says something to that process. It doesn't it doesn't make any sense. You know, it's much more easy for me to conceptualize um, Alice and Bill making a, an exchange than than two uh, two abstract processes and. Uh, so I, I, anyway, I go for uh, using first person in, in communication with, uh, with users uh, as a recommendation that, that I think works nice. Uh, some people might be offended though. I, I re of course, the ELISA program and these things uh, were, <coughs> were, w did this and fooled everybody. Uh, they would, they would say, you, know, this, you know what I mean? The program that the doctor is in now and, and you, and you and it says, please state your problem, and then it says, I understand, and you know, and all this, and, um, um, and what, what? How long have you felt this way? Yes, this? right, right, that's right, and 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 then it quotes this X from your previous sentence and everything, and yeah, so you, so it makes it seem as though there's more going on here. You know, you can be, you can certainly, uh, you know, pull magic tricks this way, uh, but but uh, you can also do this more effectively than. Than sticking to only uh, only abstract stuff. Um, <clears throat> okay. Now here's a case of starting a se starting a, a sentence with a symbol. Um, uh, data is the name of a variable here, and so it says data assumes that no novel file will be more than five thousand lines long, which to me appears far more than enough. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so I just added a few words. The big data array assumes that no, and so on. Because in, in Pascal, you have to declare the size of your arrays. Um, so again, it seemed to me jarring to start out the sentence with a lowercase letter and starting it out with a symbol. Now, now the, uh, the, the second program this person, this freshman, wrote was uh, was very pleasant for me to to read. Um, uh, because he had a, he has a unique style which which very which very well came through in his in his writing, um, and uh, you'll see, you'll see that as we in the next minute or two. Um, 
you know, he starts out and he says, hmm, let's see what we need to put in the main body and all this. You know, he's, so he's, he's, uh, um, he's uh, giving you the stream of consciousness all right. Um, <clears throat> now, one thing that, that was, uh, clearly could be, could be improved in this, in this starting point was he, start, he had module one, the main body, and then that was it. There's nothing, nothing there. Um, and so um, you should start out and say something. I mean, what, so you say this program does what? And so you, you know, you want to have some kind of introduction. And then I, that, then I would put that as the Pascal text to the, to, to module one, which has not, has nothing. So, so there should be something there. And then, and then these other things, these definitions, which are, which define conventions that are used elsewhere. Uh, uh, for example, counts is, is a synonym for, it's a macro, it's a synonym for count one comma count two, but that, it's not motivated at the moment, uh, uh, so, but, he, but he gives a comment that says the following are defined for ease of reading and writing the program, that's the motivation, but that comes after. The program comes first and then, you know, so this, this part of the thing should belong in module one and then these definitions nice in module two. Here I suggested a better name for this. He called it range, but range is not very descriptive. That could mean anything. So I, why not call it caps or caps range? Because he's defining a range of, of capital letters, and things like that. Okay. Now um, he uh, <coughs> um, is implementing a rather complicated uh, procedure here, uh, and I don't. Want, I'm not going to go into that, but I want to. Uh, but he has things called the brain. He says, well, let's try and see if we can read in the data and set up a graph. Um, uh, okay. Um, let's see, where are we going to do it? Now that we have the meat of the program down, let's get to the nitty gritty. Um, so, um, the, the, his personality was certainly coming through in the, in the style. Says, uh, aha, two more variables. Well, you would have to go all the way back to the var section in ordinary Pascal. You, all, you, all we do in web is add them right here. It says, how about a web programming contest in which you are unable to back up in the program? Okay, so, and here I, I, I just commented that's the best expo exposition of a program, except for people who, who, you know, especially for people who never get better ideas and throw, and throw stuff away. But, uh, but anyway, he was, he was realizing at this point that he could declare a variable right here where, where he wanted to, and he didn't have to go back and put it in. Um, and he says, well, this is great, but we have to initialize hash table to some sort of initial value. Since I have more cells than the number of characters in most reasonable books, I will mark those and so on. So, um, but he, uh, he, got, he got his, the feeling of, a <laughs> of enthusiasm into this mo better than anybody else I've seen in a program. Um, uh, oh, I, I, his program is called Components, but at the beginning, but the name of the program here is Complements, and uh, and I wondered why he called it Complements, and finally I I found out that they're both the same for him. <laughs> complement and Component are the same, and so I told him that I better that I had to warn him that those words are slightly different. Um, <clears throat> Okay, um, now, uh, the asterisks here got up high. If he had used a typewriter style asterisk, it would have been, it would have been down lower and looked more like an asterisk that you would see in a, in a, in a, in a text file. Um, that's just a minor point, but asterisk, but I think uh, when you're communicating about computer programs, that's, a, that's it's, it's worth noting that asterisk, uh, is uh, in, on, a, on a, in a computer terminal is t tends to be down low, you know, centered, like the letter C or something like that. But if it's an asterisk that's in a in a uh, standard font of of uh, type that you get from a typesetter, as a, as opposed to a computer terminal asterisk, it tends to be way up high. And if you've only got one um, uh, in a font, then uh, it's it's t t t tends to be problems. That is. Uh, uh, you, you find when you start computer science writing that you're marking all the asterisks to be lowered to, a, to, to the printer if, you, if, you don't have, if they don't already have a body-centered asterisk. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, here's, a, here's a cute uh, thing I had never seen uh, in, in exposition before, and uh, I, I'm not recommending it, but I just thought it was cute. I wanna, it, it, it says, it goes down a list of characters that we have used, and it says, Pren, remember a double star, question mark, why? <laughs> so in other words, it, he's got this prompt, and he always also answers it with a why here. So he's, he's talking computerese uh, very self-consciously, but uh, it was still kind of cute. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, Uh-oh, we've just introduced several more variables. Better declare them. All are pretty trivial. I trust the general reader to understand their use. Uh, this is not a good thing to trust the general reader to. I mean, uh, I have a general rule that whenever you declare a variable, always give a comment about what the significance of that variable is, even if the name of the variable is rather self-descriptive. This is the best place for a comment that's sort of an informal invariant about what that variable satisfies. Um, sometimes the variable is, is really just so trivial that it doesn't deserve a comment. And then you just say, you know, temporary, temporary variable for manipulation or something. But I would still say that in a comment. Um, but if it's a count, you would say, you know, this is how many names there are or something, not just a counter. But you would say, you know, something that describes what the, what the variable means. Uh, always, give a, always give a comment whenever you define a variable, I'd say. <clears throat> All right. Now, another freshman, his first use of web, uh, has a, a program that was processing the, the Mona Lisa in an interesting way. And uh, um, <clears throat> this program reads a data file, a digitized version of the famous Mona Lisa painting, which is considered to be a single undirected graph. And he explains in which, in which way you I mean, it has rows and columns, and that's an incidence matrix, and, and uh, you make a graph out of it. Well, um, <clears throat> now here, here um, is an asterisk used for multiplication. Uh, it doesn't work very well. I mean, a uh, high asterisk up there for multiplication. Anyway, you, even if it were down low, it would be better replace it by a multiplication sign, I think. Um, and then you would say rows here, of course, is because you're saying columns in, in order to be consistent. Um, here, this per see, the, using the, the style here, he decided that the title of every module would be used with all caps. I mean, capitalize, uh, capitalize every uh, every word after the first one. Now, that's a, something that's difficult to do automatically. You capitalize the word and too. And usually, if we're capitalizing something and mixing caps and lowercase, we uh, in a title, we would we would take the most common words like of and and things like that, and not capitalize them. And when you get newspaper headlines and so, things like that, uh, except I guess they have a rule that if you start a new line, you break the headline into two lines, and the second line starts with and, you still capitalize the and sometimes. A lot of people, I don't know. Um, but uh, it, it didn't work too well in web programs, so I, I suggest not doing that. Just capitalize the first, the first one, which seemed to, be, seemed to work well to have a to have it, I, I experimented with with both ways, uh, and capitalizing the first one seemed to work. Not putting a period at the end seemed to be seemed to be good, but not capitalizing the whole work seemed seemed to work. Um, <clears throat> and here's another point about tech, this goes into ordinary technical writing. Here's talking about bytes. Um, now when we and hexadecimal uh, hexadecimal notation. Now here's a, here's a, another place where fonts can help in exposition. If you're writing hexadecimal, uh, typewriter type turns out to be a nice code for saying this is a, a hexadecimal number. If you if uh, you know so if you see if you see a use of typewriter type for a number, you you, you might know that that's base 16 automatically. Um, uh, but now he did. He 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 started. He had a he had it right at the beginning. But then he, he should have put the 63 in Roman. So here he has the 3F. This is in typewriter style. And he says 3F represents 63. That 63 should be ordinary Roman in decimal. So it was a normal decimal type. Normal decimal numbers in normal de in normal type. But um, uh, but when you say double F represents white, double zero represents black. Um, that those are in in typewriter, indicating these are uh, these are hexadecimal digits. Um, okay, worthwhile. 
typewriter type seems to, seems to have a nice machine-oriented function to it that helps, helps distinguish itself here. Now, here's a, a matter of exposition. Um, we, he's got a, this is a, a fairly good-sized program. It's about 50, 57 modules. Um, and um, it's trying to look at the pixels. Essentially, it has 90,000 pixels of Mona Lisa, and it's trying to uh, pick out the, the darkest ones, I, I think, uh, in the whole array. And so it's using a heap for this, uh, a, uh, uh, the, heap, the kind of heap that means um, used for a priority queue so that you can, you can find the, uh, the thousand largest elements in, in the heap. Uh, you, know, you, you, don't, you don't store all, all, all the pixels in memory, but you only store the, the currently largest ones in this kind of data structure called a heap. And so he has this, as, at this point in his program, he's mentioned that he's going to keep a, use a heap for his data structure. And uh, now uh, he's defined it, and he got, we've got the data structure for it. But then, it turn, then, uh, um, uh, then the program goes on and talks about a, a complicated graph theory algorithm. And then finally, when we get to module 52 or something, we go and do a, a sort on the heap. Um, and uh, this is, uh, you know, but the, the, the reader of the program is all geared up and understands heaps right now. So it would have work, work, worked out better to get through while this is fresh in, in, in mind uh, to do that part of the program that's going to use the heap at this point. And you can do that with web. You can, you can, put, you can put code in um, uh, at any point. It, you don't have to write top down uh, or bottom up or any other order. You can, you can write in whatever order you think is right for exposition. And, and the, uh, the web system is going to put the program together into, into the order that the, that the machine needs it later on. So, you, so at this point, it would, be, it would be a good idea to give the algorithm for heap sort. Um, uh, now, however, you get a problem. That is, um, uh, the sort routine calls one of the, in, in, his, in his program, his sort routine has, has a call on another procedure called add edge, which isn't declared yet, I mean, uh, which is going to be part of his graph, gr graph theory algorithm. And we're not ready to understand that, that at all yet. We have to push that down. Um, so uh, how, do you, how do you do that? Well, in web, you can, you can um, insert, like uh, in here under procedures and you can insert the sorting procedure as a separate module and say, and then that'll get put in before the other procedures that, that I mean, I, I mean it'll, you, can put, you can call it the sorting procedure and call that here the, instead of procedures and functions used and add it to that part of the program, you just call it the sorting procedure, and then it would be guaranteed that the sorting procedure will come last after the other procedures that it actually calls. And when we get to that part of the, of the procedure, there's, it's, it would be easy to, to, here's the sorting procedure, and it would be easy to take this part of it and replace it by something called use the largest element of the heap to add an edge to the graph. Then this module would have some number to it, like it would have a number of 50, which would show the reader this is coming up later after we understand what it means to add an edge to the graph. Um, but, and, and we could then understand this much of it perfectly well while, we're, while we know what a heap is and, what we, and about sorting, and we wouldn't have to mix all the things together in our minds and, do, and we could, we could get, get the heap stuff out of the way once and for all. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Um, uh, the, uh, um, <clears throat> uh, one of the problems about documentation is that e that uh, it should actually it, e it should actually um, uh, match the formal the, the formal thing. So here he has a variable called avail, but in his documentation he calls it a, um, and that can be confusing. I mean, <laughs> if you don't, so you got to you got to make sure there's no, nobody checking that this informal description actually matches the formal one. Uh, Okay, now let's see. Anything else here? Um, not too important there. Um, okay, nothing terribly important here. The, um, the these two modules are really the same, so there's no reason to to uh, to to have two separate modules for that. Um, but I had a more important thing. Oh, yeah, here. Uh, as a matter of style in web, um, 
uh, I found that it was generally better, when I have a, the name of a module like join isolated vert vertices, it would be good to, 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 in, to start that code with the word begin and end the code with the word end. Instead of saying begin and then join isolated vertices and then end around, you know, instead of putting the begin and end around the, the, the uh, call of, the, of that code, put that code, you know, put it inside the code because the, syntactically it looks like join isolated vertices is a unit. And if you, if you didn't have a begin and end there and you just wrote it in here, it would look like, you know, because these brackets here look like parentheses, it looks like it's got a begin and end around it. You'd have a terrible bug because uh, Pascal would only, would only associate the first, uh, the, the first statement here with the, with the if, if then, and, it would, and uh, you, would, you would read through this, it would look like it's saying something other than it really does. So make a, st a, a general convention on myself that I put a begin and end. Uh, inside the modules. Now, of course, if I had a programming system, if web were, were not being patched on top of Pascal and I was really using a programming environment, uh, my programming environment would do this for me. It would, it would make sure that I wouldn't make such errors. I have, to, I have to use that discipline. But it certainly makes a better looking exposition to put the begin and end inside than, in, than outside. Oh, I'm sorry. The, uh, I went way over time. I'm very sorry today. So. Uh, uh, see you Friday. So.